There's a survey we got from Nish. Oh, cool. Thank you. Oh, I just want to stay. I don't want to stand for an hour and a half. I don't know about you. Do we know? The whole time you message that? Well, I get so like anxious and work out. Oh. <laughs> like if I sat, I'd probably fall out of the chair. For me, I'm like, if I stand and I'm like, oh, my back hurts. I need to sit down. I can't stand the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> I think we didn't want a table, right? We can definitely move it. So um, we can leave one over here, and you guys can grab it and move it around. As you need. She made um, Debbie's best friends when they came for her last month. This is what they wanted, and she made this for them. Wow. Should we put it I have a pair of shoes, and I can wear them for like an hour, and then my feet just yeah. You guys need my other from the car. I love them; they're so cute. But like, if I'm doing any sort of action, now yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's why mine are in there. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you probably shouldn't wear my tennis shoes today. <laughs> oh, I think. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Okay. Yeah. That was me.
Questions, Mike. Okay. Uh, I I I you don't want to interpret it, man. The top is kind of wonky. Not automatically. <laughs>
think we've already hit a few of them. One of them is I promise I won't change it to Spanish speaking only. <laughs> now you may have some, you may have some self <laughs> Hi, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started. I think we've got everybody online. I think that part has slowed down. So, so I'm Amy McKeever. I'm the case management director at Colorado Blue Sky. And we'll just let everybody introduce themselves. Good morning, or it's almost a good afternoon. I'm Colleen Bachelor. I am the CEO with the Resource Exchange. Janine Gonzalez, CES and CHIRP coordinator for uh, TRE. I'm Anthony Shibata. I'm here uh, with Whipley talking about some of these projects that we're doing. Hello, I'm Heather Mazes, Manager of Quality and Nursing Facilities at TRE. Hello, I'm Sheree Ulmer, a manager at the Resource Exchange. And I'm Nancy Vigil. I'm the Director of Navigation and Quality at the Resource Exchange. I was just going to do a couple housekeeping things. So we have a lot of people online, and the only way they can hear us is if we talk into the microphone. So we have people around the room that have microphones. So if you guys have questions, if you could wait for the microphone for us, please. And then possibly mute, mute your films and hold the side conversations to a minimum so people can hear. That was one of our um, comments from our Tuesday town hall, that there was a lot of outside chatter and people couldn't hear, especially the people online. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So um, we're going to start off with some updates. I think one of the things that has been really impressive to me about um, this transition into Pueblo has been the level of collaboration across this community has been phenomenal. And I want you all to know that and trust that it is happening. Um, we have had uh, amazing partnership and collaboration with Colorado Blue Sky, as well as with Pueblo County DHS and, and those systems and programs. And I think that what I have learned is their commitment to making sure that this community receives what it should receive is the utmost. I mean, it's it's way up there. So um, everything that we are doing, and you're gonna get some update of, of what that is producing right now and what our timelines are looking like. And then we're gonna get into some discussion of projects that we are working on to improve our systems overall and really improve the servers, services that members are getting in this community, as well as in El Paso Park and Teller. Um, so I'll, if we could look at the timeline document that was sent, that the Excel spreadsheet. Oh, is that better? Okay, is that working? We said turn it up just one second. Is that working now? Okay. Nancy, I'll turn it over. Okay. What, you know, I, I just want to reiterate what Colleen had said in the partnership that we've established with Colorado and Pueblo County. You know, this is a, a Herculean effort and it takes everybody to help make this a successful transition. So I just want to extend a, a thank you to CBE. And even though Pueblo County is not here to them as well, because we are moving forward at lightning speed, maybe a little slower than you all want us to, but I promise you we'll, we will have a good product at the end of the day. Uh, just wanted to let you all know that. And so some of the some of the efforts that we have done here in Pueblo 
to help us with this transition is uh, we had a town hall meetings with the non-IDD individuals and the IDD members. Um, we had our CBE town hall with members on Tuesday. We had with Pueblo County members back in December. We This is our first provider town hall with all of you. Um, we're hoping to have monthly town halls to keep you updated on all of our progress. Um, and, you know, we want to hear from you. We don't want to build a process that is just suited for the resource exchange. We want it to um, suit everybody's needs. The resource exchanges, the members, um, advocates, families, um, members, providers. We want to really complete a holistic approach so that we can make things smoother for everybody. We know our processes um, and our um, rules that we have to follow are many. And so we're trying to eliminate as many bottlenecks in the process as humanly possible. Um, so we'll discuss that a little bit more with, with Anthony and the projects we're completing. Um, we did, we're working on, on a subcontract with Pueblo County. We're almost in the, the finishing phases. Um, what that means for Pueblo County is uh, Pueblo County will continue providing some services to some individuals. They are going to complete uh, or continue providing case management services for anyone who's in an assisted care facility or an ACF, anyone who is in the CDOS program, anyone who's in the IHSS programs, um, they will continue helping us do intake and eligibility for non-IDD members. Um, they're also going to provide services for those who are in waivers and long-term home health. Um, our long-term home health team in t at the resource exchange, they will continue reviewing and approving all long-term home health PARs uh, for both El Paso Park, Teller, and Pueblo County. Um, we'll provide more information on that later um, when we have our systems all up and running. Um, we interviewed with CBE staff last week, two weeks ago. Yeah, the weeks are all blurring together. Um, and we were able to extend 17 offers to CBE staff. Our goal and hope is really we heard loud and clear from a lot of the CB, CBE members that they wanted uh, that continued case management services from a lot of their uh, case managers here in Pueblo County. So um, we've accomplished that. Um, Amy and myself and Sue, where's Sue Litton? Yep, yep. We are meeting next Friday and we are going to power through many, many um, hanging chads so that we have a well-established process here in Pueblo County um, and that we make sure that members, we build caseloads, we figure out who needs case managers, who wants to, there, there are some that want to switch, so we need to accommodate that. Um, we are also, our partnership with Pueblo County, um, we have they have agreed to let us utilize some of their deferred funds to fill positions for Pueblo County specifically so that we have enough case managers to, to start the work. Um, we're hoping to have, my goal is to have 20 or more employees hired by February 4th, but that might be a pipe dream for me. Um, if you all know of any family members, relatives, friends who may want to apply, they can go to the Express website. Um, 
Is it express personnel? Yeah, here in Pueblo County, we have positions posted there. Um, just so that you all know, they will be temporary staff to begin with. We have to do this because that's the way Pueblo County operates. And then on March 1st, they will become TRE employees. We are hey, all- Hey, Nancy, I'm sorry to interrupt. We had a bunch of people on the Teams call. Could you repeat how many offers or what offers were already extended in the Pueblo area? Um, there were 17 offers made to service coordinators. Did that help, Laura? Yep, I just know that was some questions I saw being posted. So thank you. Uh-huh, you're welcome. Staff total or 20 additional staff from the 17 that have already been hired? 20 additional staff. Thank you. Yeah. We're hoping for more, but you know, I think everyone is seeing there's somewhat of a little obstacle in hiring staff. And we're hoping that we don't face that obstacle. So hold on, Sue. Let, let's make sure that you have a microphone so that everyone online can hear you. Any additional staff, what, what is their capacity? What are their job role? Well, it all depends, Sue. We're still, we're still building the team and Really, when we talk about some of the projects we're working with Whitfley, I promise you it'll make a little bit more sense. But we're really trying to get a feel from the Pueblo community as to what their needs and wants are. We're trying to build a system that works not just for the resource exchange, like I said, but for everyone, for the members, for their families, for our providers. And so we are going to ask for everyone's help in building that system. Okay, for so for Express, we're hiring, of course, service coordinators. We are hiring some case aides and we're going to um, hire for a front desk receptionist. Building wise, we are working on securing um, a lease at Wells at the old Wells Fargo building. Um, we're working on a lease agreement with them. Next week, uh, Colleen, myself, and Don, who is our um, facilities director, is we're going to tour that office. Um, we have been told that we will we can operationalize as, as of March 1st. We'll have a front desk reception area and some seating. We will have TRE employees in-house on March 1st uh, for the community. Um, we won't have all of our office space available, but we're, hope that, we're hoping that all the tenant finishes will occur fairly quickly, um, but we will be present. I'll pass it over to Colleen. So as part of the transition into Pueblo and as part of the process improvement that the resource exchange is wanting to implement um, in our current service area of El Paso Park and Teller, we have been working with Whitley and Anthony's here with Whitley to talk about some of the projects that we have engaged them into. Um, we started working with Whitley as our IT consultant uh, almost three years ago. Um, and have been fortunate enough to really engage in a lot of other business consultation with them to help improve our operations. And so um, I'm going to let Anthony talk a little bit about um, all three of the projects that we're working on that will involve Pueblo County and how you can get involved in those. All right. Thanks, y'all. Um, to go through this, so we have some visualizations that's going to help this. This is really the timeline of these. And so if we can scroll down on that, uh, the sheet that's being shared uh, to go to that next line, right? The green area is really what I'd like to focus on for this next piece. Um, 
because uh, so Colleen mentioned the the projects that we're working on, and really it's a it's a pretty simple approach, right? When we're when we're uh, we're trying to make things as simple and straightforward as possible, and the way that we do that is uh, the acronym is PPT, but it's People, Process, and Technology, right? And in that order, so we're looking to um, engage with uh, y'all as part of the people, um, but that's also uh, the individuals receiving services and then the existing tier employee community at, at large here that we're trying to uh, uh, get feedback from to to then influence uh, how we go and execute the next few phases, which are, uh, we'll see here in a moment with the, the change management and process improvement. And then ultimately, so that's the P, the second P piece. And then the last one is the technology or the tools that help you all uh, accomplish that. And so the the first piece here uh, this this green element is what we refer to as an idea uh, discovery, which is just a fancy consulting term for getting feedback from everyone involved. Right? And so we actually have a bit of this that we're going to distribute today. Uh, with we have a, a physical survey uh, that you can fill out, and actually, you know, if you prefer to write on paper, we have a QR code that you can scan on your phone to fill it out online. And for those um, who are joining remotely, uh, we will have a link in that in the chat. Uh, for you to fill out this survey, but it's a it's a pretty straightforward process. It's really just asking you what's going well, what's frustrating, and any suggestions or things that you have to make the interaction with Thierry is uh, down here as part of the community um, and yourselves uh, as efficient and effective as possible. And so, and we really, I can't emphasize enough how serious um, we take these because these directly impact uh, any of the solutions that we provide from that point going forward. And again, that's how we communicate with y'all in our change management process. It's how we roll out uh, training um, for any of the particular uh, steps that we need to take in terms of business, right? just the actual communication piece or um, uh, the tools that we use to do that. And ultimately, the technology that we build on the background to help support that. And this is direct. So an example of this that I think I'm third town hall now and finally can can do in a, an effective way is uh, we um, in the first round of surveys that we did about a year and a half ago with uh, Thierry uh, we had feedback that said we lack visibility as people receiving services or representatives for individuals receiving services in the intake process in our um, you know, as we're, you know, applying for these services, we, we just we, we fill out the form and then we just don't know. And it's it's confusing to us and we feel like, you know, we're not getting communicated to. And so the suggestion from that group was to have something along the same lines as like a, the term they used was the Domino's Pizza Tracker, right? To say, I'd like to know where I'm at in this process. Um, and so in response to that, one of the technology elements that we're doing is creating um, a web site that they can log into to see where is my application have i been uh, confirmed have i been verified am i now with the state for processing and then subsequently once they're uh, receiving services give them a look back on the services that they've received the dates on that and the timing on that and so they have a, an outlet for those who are wanting to use technology to be able to self-service go online see that kind of thing get that communication immediately and not feel like they don't have any visibility into the process um, that's just one example, though. There, there's several others that have come through um, from staff and others, but that's a direct impact from the surveys that we've done. Uh, and so, you know, today as we pass these out to y'all, um, please do take the time to do that. I can say unequivocally your responses are um, taken seriously and are going to be uh, reviewed and heard and be implemented as part of this plan for how, again, from the people side, how we can effectively incorporate either a business process or training or communication strategy or technology to support it uh, going forward. Um, now, as we go down a little bit more, right, talking about some of these other projects, so that's the kind of the influence piece. That's the direct feedback that we're looking for, for y'all from y'all. Um, the next piece then is really the strategy on managing the change around it because change is always a little bit scary, um, but that doesn't mean that it it needs to be negative, right? Uh, sorry, the yellow one. So, yeah, there we go. Um, and you'll see here is that we have a plan here to um, 
take feedback, take that impact and create a, a communication plan for, throughout all of this to hopefully, well, to improve upon what's already been communicated and keep that consistent going forward. Because even though the big shift is happening March 1st, um, it doesn't end there, right? We're going to go far beyond that. And so this is something that we want to make sure that we're doing effectively so that y'all are in the loop so that nothing is, uh, there's always going to be questions, but as long as you, you feel that you're part of the process and getting your, your questions heard and you're getting that communication as part of it, that's the big piece in the change strategy. The other piece of it is obviously incorporating any new tools or processes that we're doing too, um, but you'll see that, that that same piece doesn't stop throughout. So that is something that you can expect today is kind of your first interaction point with that going forward and starting here in February. Uh, it should be more coming from the TRE and our team side uh, to y'all. So we can say, hey, this is happening. We need this kind of, or we need this feedback from y'all or this effort is happening. You know, please go online to, you know, see specifics about it, right? We want to make sure that there's not just general questions floating out there and that you feel like you don't know what's going on. Um, if we go down a little bit further, uh, so the next one, the red one, uh, our process piece. So we we have engaged in, in terms of a process improvement, and that is focused primarily on the people side of this. And so you'll see here, there's a large pause. And the reason for that is, is that so much of what we've been discussing is around uh, simplifying how uh, y'all work with each other in terms of data entry and things like that. And uh, the reason that there's a pause here is because we've done a, a, a large amount of investigation up front, and we kind of realize that this is predicated on the technology that we use. So much of the redundancy and in entering forms and individuals' information and the communication back and forth. Um, Nancy had given an example of PARs before, you know, do you have the PAR? Has it been sent out? Yeah, we sent it out. Well, I don't see it in my email. Well, are you sure? Right. And the constant go between on things like that. Um, is again, the technology is gonna help that quite a bit. And so the, the, the next project underneath this is our database project, which is giving us the backbone so that you can enter things once. And then again, along the lines of that tracking element, see when forms have been filled out, when they need to be verified, when they need to go externally to get uh, um, any kind of additional approvals or uh, funding approval, what have you. That build, is being done during that pause and then we're going to be testing it and the reason that and then what the outcome is on that is is that once we have the technology so you don't have to do this back and forth in communication and redundant data entry is that then we can come back in and say okay now this is fixed now let's do another round and say how do we improve this even further now we have a tool set that's going to be helpful that's going to help you all uh, communicate more effectively that's going to give you the ability similar to go into a portal to see where something's at or to download or upload documents um, now what's going to help further, right? Maybe it's an enhancement on the alerts or notifications. Maybe it's reminders that come out. Maybe it's, um, you know, when I upload this document there, I want it to, you know, if it sits there for three days, I want to get an alert that says no one's responded to it, right? And then you can reach out rather than having to get on the phone, you know, and kind of needle through the, um, you know, who, whomever the correct individual is in that respect. So, we're gonna come back to it after that. So that's kind of how all these lay out. But if you notice, every single one of these is active right now. Um, and they're all kind of relying on one another for, um, you know, critical, like the next step piece. Right? Uh, and so they, they all influence this. U ultimately our objective is, you know, very simply, we wanna give you more hours in your day to help directly interact with people. Right? That's what That's what we're going to, so. We're going to try to eliminate redundancy on the administrative side. We're going to try to make it very efficient to communicate. Um, and then that way, when you have someone who, this came up in our last one, individuals who don't want to use technology, right? because that's that's a, a reality, right? then you have more time to interact with those individuals because the ones who do interact with the technology are freeing up those hours and you don't have the same administrative burden that you'd have you had to enter the same information or track down information you know, six to seven times a day. So. That's the projects in a nutshell. Um, again, people process technology. We have our feedback piece. We have our process refinement. We have our database uh, project. Um, and then we have the, the control around the change and the communication on that. But any questions on any of that? Comments, concerns, funds? 
Anthony, I have a two part question. So who would have permissions to be able to access and how is the data safeguarded? What measures are being taken there? So the from a permission standpoint, um, so all access definitions haven't been defined yet, but there is a, um, a field level security throughout the system. So that gives us the ability to say, um, you as a TRE employee have access to this amount of data, whether that be everything or partial. Uh, the same is true for any external and any external individuals that would connect. So for an individual receiving services, they'd be able to see their personal profile and nothing else for individuals serving many people based on that kind of thing, they would have access to see, uh, well, those individuals that they're working with. Um, but again, that field level security is what defines that. And so there is part of the implementation is going through and testing that in example cases to figure out what, if I log in with this specific role, what am I seeing? Um, so how many, but we have the ability to have as many of those as we need. So the, the only, the only uh, give there is that through testing, we have to prove that out. We have to define the roles that are gonna be accessing the system and say, okay, this person is gonna to need to see this gamut of things. And then we massage that, test it a couple more times. And then, and then we have that going forward for other individuals that would have a similar profile. And then, sorry, the second piece was, oh, security. Yeah, so, the, the, so this is all built on Microsoft technologies. Um, the specific systems, uh, they are um, HIPAA compliant uh, by default. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. It just means it's capable of doing that. So through this process, we do have to be very wary that we are um, ensuring that any uh, personal identifying information and those kind of things are safeguarded and uh, the privileges are done you know, appropriately. We do have the tools to do that, uh, but that is, a, um, that is an element of this project is making sure that we go through that. We're compliant throughout. Um, any information that can't be shared to individuals is either removed from the form or done in a masked way. So for instance, like a social security is like start out kind of thing. Like we can show that we have it, but we're not gonna show you what that number is kind of thing. Um, and so that's something that as part of the project we review and then we'll have some governance over that with, uh, we actually have a few individuals who, who do that specifically um, as we build these out. So, one thing I want I want to help connect the dots about is really the importance of filling out this survey. Um, I call it our next iteration of greatness. And I honestly believe that partnerships and customer service are a number one. And Jen, I'm going to pick on you because uh, I always love and enjoy your feedback. Jen is one, she's one of our providers in El Paso County but we have a lot of communication back and forth and Jen provides feedback to, to me consistently. She's like, Nance, what about this? Nancy, what about that? And so when I think of this database, I have Jen in the back of my mind <laughs> and thinking, okay, let's eliminate as many roadblocks in the processes that we can so that she's happy, that I'm happy, that families are happy, that everyone's happy so that, and everyone has a clear idea of where a person is in their journey in life and the journey of their service plan, whatever you want to call it. But that's why the idea journey process and us asking you all to fill out those uh, surveys is so very important to us because without your feedback, we are going to develop something that we may think we got right, but maybe we didn't. Maybe we missed a mark on something. Like when Anthony talks about PARS, I can tell you on a daily basis, Sheree, Heather, and I probably, no kidding, receive probably 400 plus emails a day asking for PARS. And so when we look, you know, you multiply that. And when you have a list from someone, it is very time consuming to try to go back and find those PARs. But then I understand the effect it has on providers that, hey, you need the PARs so you can bill. But we're like, okay, so we've sent it several times. They didn't receive it. We sent it. 
the the idea of the portal is so that you all can go in there pull that par whenever you need it's going to stay there so that we can eliminate all the back and forth so those are ideas that we're thinking of while we're building this database so we can help you help our members because that is the most important piece um again partnership customer service a number one that's our goal help us think through it going back to the pars um we've noticed that we have a little bit of issue right now going where the par and the billing codes aren't matching. And so we wanna make sure that if there's a way that we can make sure when the portal's built that those are correct. I had to work against it per to make sure that it's going correctly. So I apologize because I'm always inside my own brain. <laughs> and I heard that you receive pars billing code is incorrect well those ones you will have to really reach out to us and talk to us about because they're going to be one-offs or what idea might you have in this database world how we can maybe rectify that that it's an excellent question but i've never thought of that one <laughs> Um, with the database too, there will be a chat option available, which means, you know, you'll be able to go in and put, if you have comments or questions, you'll be able to just um, enter it at, in the chat so that we can get back to you um, quickly with that as well. And so that's an option that we're extremely excited about because it will be something where you can receive a response as, you know, you're entering that information in, so. Um, so we, we've been working with TRA for uh, quite a few years now, um, both in Colorado Springs and in the Pueblo area. Um, our issues with plans is that we really don't have anybody to talk to once a plan has been submitted. If there's an issue with a plan, we send an email to a case manager. Um, if it, either it hasn't been submitted yet past the, the start date or it's been submitted incorrectly, um, what we're told is if it's not submitted before the start date is that it's in the process. Um, and that is not supposed to be the process. The process is you have a plan in hand at your start date. Um, we don't have a person that we can actually talk to to help work us through those issues. With IT, uh, I think the more you get IT involved, the more, the less you talk to actual people. And people are the people, uh, people are the, the mechanism for fixing those small problems. And they are anomalies. They, they don't happen all the time. But and there was a transition from one system that you guys had to another and data was lost. And we still don't know who to talk to in getting paid for those that gap. Um, and no one can tell us who to talk to. So those are some of the issues that IT can't fix. I got to talk to a person who can go into the system and enter the data in the system so it can be corrected. You are 100% correct. And you know, I will get your information after this town hall and we will rectify that situation for you. I have questions on the chat. The first one is how long will it take to get a copy of the service plan once the IDT has already taken place? <clears throat> so I think that's a trick question. <laughs> 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 yeah, it, it is a very tricky question. And Laura, I know you're online as well. And if you want to jump in and help uh, answer that question, I'd appreciate it. Because I, I can tell you my thought and idea and what I know, for me, it's 30 days. Once you staff it, you have 30 days to get everything do done bone. Yeah, so Nancy, I can certainly um, echo that that is our 
hopeful timeline too. There's always things that can go wrong, right? But if everything goes well and everything goes as, as expected, yes, you should have that no later than 30 days. All right. The next question from online is, does your case management department automatically schedule six month reviews or does that need to be requested? That's a Laura question as well. Yep. Our service coordinators should be reaching out to schedule those um, with everyone involved. Fantastic. The next question online, how long does it take to process a change in a service plan? I or might need clarification on how that's different than the first question. Um, so I don't, I don't know if they could un unmute and just explain that a little differently. Could they possibly be asking about a revision? I'm, I'm, my guess is that it's about a revision. Yeah. yeah. So the, I'll, uh, can you guys hear me? I'm on my car audio. Yeah. Um, thanks, but yes, the first, yeah, no problem. The first question was just in regard to, you know, after an annual staffing, how long would it get, take to get that service plan? And this question is referring to a service plan revision. Um, I will be honest, I, as a provider, I'm a little bit nervous about this just because in, in our experience, it typically does take quite a while um, for a revision to process. I'm hearing that we're already going to be pretty short staffed in Pueblo, it sounds like. And so I am concerned that that timeline is going to be pushed further. Can you expand on that? Yeah, thanks for clarifying. I think it's all ideal, right? So I think that 30 day mark is still a good guideline um, with, with our best attempts to meet that. Well, and I wanna also clarify on your worries about not having enough staff available March 1st. I don't have that same trepidation because and what I forgot to mention, in conjunction with the 17 employees that we've hired from Colorado Blue Sky, we currently have seven service coordinators who already work in the Pueblo area. They are going to um, transition their case loads of members from El Paso Park and Teller, and they're going to focus solely on Pueblo County. So we have that additional seven staff. In addition to that, uh, Pueblo County, we are subcontracting with them to complete some case management services there. They have, yes, yeah, 17 or 21 case managers as well. Plus our goal and hope is to hire more than 20, but I'm shooting for 20 right now, <laughs> um, employees. So we will have a fairly robust team here in Pueblo County. I appreciate that, thank you. Questions online, um, where does the state billing get turned into and what are your timelines in turning in that state billing? Yep, so I will be sending an email out early next week to everyone that currently is providing state general fund services with all of that information. We wanted to get through um, this town hall first and then I'll be pushing send on that. All right, thank you. The next question on the online chat is what is the timeline for the portal for agencies and when will that information be available to the agency? So we're looking at um, a multiple step rollout of this system. And so the first uh, rollout is expected probably sometime in April. Um, I think Anthony mentioned that there will be some user testing on the system between February and April to kind of test it, make sure that what the pieces that we're rolling out in April, um, that will begin to have some of the uh, ability to look online at information, uh, tracking where a person is in the process, as well as some access to sending out referrals to providers. Is that right in phase one? Yes, uh, the referrals will be part of phase one. And again, we heard loud and clear from a lot of providers that the re referral process needs to be refined, that referrals are sent out, then they're not sure who was picked for the refer referrals. The referrals were never closed. That is going to be a big part of the referral process. Um, 
like I said, throughout the years, I do listen to what providers keep asking us. And I'm like, that there has to be that closure in the referral process. So that will be part of it. The um, client portal will be somewhat available in the first phase. <clears throat> and what that means is they'll be able to upload documents to us. We know specifically for the IDD waivers, there's much more eligibility components in that. And so we wanna be sure that we eliminate the, oh, we faxed it to you, we emailed it to you. Um, we know sometimes, it I don't know where it goes, but it gets lost somewhere. <laughs> it goes into this big black electronic hole, but we're trying to eliminate a lot of those back and forth. And so people will be able to upload their doc documents directly into our database. The uh, provider side of the portal, and Anthony, if I totally get this wrong, please um, help me explain it because I'm not that IT savvy, but it really is about security measures and making sure they're really robust in the first phases. And so that, you know, HIPAA is very important to us. And then as we build it out, it will be in the third phase where that provider portal will be available um, and you all will be able to upload documents. We'll, we can download documents. There's no more needing to email us back and forth. That portal will be your one-stop shop and where we will do a lot of our exchanging of documents. Um, and then two, our hope and goal is that you can also see someone asked about a revision. How long is that process? That there will be a tracker for you as well so that you can see, hey, we had a, 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 a revision meeting on this date. Where are we are in the where are we at in the process and how close are we get are are we to obtaining that par? So it'll be a, a nice, easy visual for you all as well, for our members, and actually for TRE too. I mean, it'll be a nice visual for us so that if someone does fall this, through the cracks, we're like, oh goodness, we totally missed that one. We we missed the mark on that one. So it'll be, a, it'll, it, it's the, de the design is really to help everybody. So as I was saying, it's going to roll out in three phases. First phase, we'll, we'll release some of these um, uh, activities and availability in April. The next rollout should be in, sometime in July. And then the final product should be finished in September. So we're talking a pretty quick turnaround for this system. And it's being, it's being purchased with state dollars. So all of the, the technical assistance funds that HICPUF has been putting out. So it's going to be available broader than just the resource exchange if there is is interest for it. So our, our goal is to really make this quality. Questions probably for Anthony. Uh, the first, it's two parts. One is, will there be e-signature abilities with the new system? Um, I don't know why I always get the multiple part questions, but. <laughs> But uh, so the so plan is yes. Yeah, so so that is a uh, functional piece. I don't know exactly what phase that's coming into, uh, but yes, that capability Correct. will be there. Okay, the second question and or recommendation could be either is does the system allow for an immediate notification of a case manager change to the group, to the you know advocates and everybody else involved in that? I think that's probably a big anxiety issue and has, always has been, and not anybody's fault. It just things change. And I think the, <laughs> the yeah, that is, that, is, uh, that is just from my experience in the system for a little while now that um, that, that makes it so much nicer uh, then we can reach out also and send notifications to the case man new case manager, and that way we make sure everybody's in the loop, and it could save a lot of problems. Sent to Colorado Springs to be entered, or will they be entered in Pueblo? 
They will be entered in Pueblo. Oh. <laughs> we have a raised hand. Jenna, if you could unmute your line and ask your question. And then we have two additional comments after that. Yeah, thanks, Mariah. Um, can someone from TRE speak to what the local hierarchy might look like for the Pueblo office? For example, is there currently or will there be, um, you know, a Pueblo office supervisor or what are the thoughts there? There will be a Pueblo office supervisor and we are still building out the hierarchy there. Part of the idea journey process is really to help us think through how to build Pueblo that meets everybody's needs we're going in with no preconceived notions. And so we want to hear um, and build it together with everybody here. Um, like I said, next week, Amy, Sue, and I meet because I don't want to do this and Colleen does it to meet our needs. We really want to build an, an efficient process and team here in Pueblo County, um, that meets everybody needs. I know that's kind of a non-answer, but that's the answer we have right now. It's two comments real quick or not questions or just comments. One of them says, personally, I've seen that the annual service plan is closer to 90 days and revisions are closer to between 30 and 60 days. The second comment is, thank you for the response. I am waiting to ensure I'm wanting to ensure that we are all on the same page with portals and documentation supports. I think that the members, agencies, and consumers will have a better transparency in the documentation and support with the use of the portal system. Um, so earlier this morning, we had asked about um, bus passes with the collaboration that y'all are gonna have next week as one of those topics of discussion going to be about how the distribution of bus passes are occurring for everyone in the area or whether it's going to be per person changing things. Yeah, that's on the agenda to talk about because we've already had that discussion multiple times. So we're going to figure that out. Um, so I've got a couple of questions. Will the HRC process or committee, uh, Family Support Council, uh, quality assurance department, will they all be Pueblo specific? Stephanie, that's, that is a great question. What we are trying to do is incorporate um, members from the HRC here in Pueblo and in family support to our current council, to our current committees and councils. Um, you know, I think, um, Amy was able to send us two HRC member names that are interested in continuing on the HRC. So we have to build a process that works for everybody in El Paso Park and Pueblo counties collectively. We know that um, families' time, times, I, it, their time is very valuable. And we know that the HRC is quite time consuming to be a member of. And so we're hoping um, that both of them combined will meet both all counties needs. What about QA? Quality assurance, we are going to hire three QAs here in Pueblo County as well. Um, Heather and I still are going to figure out how to mesh Paso Park and Towner, Teller with Pueblo County, but um, rest assured, Stephanie, that is one of our top concerns and things that we're going to work on as well. And just one more question too. Um, and I asked this on Tuesday, um, and maybe Laura, when she sends that email out, is Pueblo going to be able to retain the amount of state funding that was specific for Pueblo County and the family support dollar allocation as well, or will it be um, incorporated into the other counties? From what we understand from healthcare policy and financing is there will be, the resource exchange will have a pot of money for state general funds 
Um, but we don't, we have no plans on decreasing the amount of funding that Pueblo County receives in those state general funds. And Laura, if I miss speaking, please jump in. Um, but that was our understanding. It will be a commingled pot of money. Absolutely agree. Thanks, Nance. Stephanie, I was just going to also say, too, that our quality team has um, already been processing the incident reports and all of that type of stuff um, for the Pueblo area. So we're excited to expand that expertise um, and just make sure that we continue to deliver that quality. So with the addition of those three new folks, we'll make sure that we're incorporating them into the folks that have already been processing that type of stuff down here. There's an additional comment online um, about bus passes, and it says currently the agencies are responsible for providing the bus passes on the CCB waiver that should not change unless I did not understand the question. All we're going to do is clarify where we're going to have them distributed and how we're going to do it. Just fix the process on how CBE does it currently. I have a question. Uh, my name is Patrick Davis. I'm a member of the TRE Board of Directors. I'd like Colleen to talk about the need for um, recommendations from this group for Board of Directors from Pueblo. Thank you, Patrick. Um, so the, the, the Resource Exchange Board, when we received notice that we would be awarded the CMA contract, immediately stepped forward and said, we, we need to identify some individuals from the Pueblo community to join our board of directors. Um, and so we actually have um, two members who have been uh, nominated in January. We will vote in February on their um, acceptance onto the board. They would join the board in March and we're hoping to have a board meeting here in Pueblo in March so that we can engage with the community through that board meeting. But we are looking for additional members that would come on um, our normal um, tenure is July 1st through June 30th, three years uh, tenures. Uh, you can have up to two of those three-year tenures on the board. Um, so we are looking for, and if you have recommendations, we would love to receive those recommendations for um, board members. We are um, not allowed under our bylaws to accept anyone who is employed by a provider organization, um, but um, advocates in the community, members, who receive services, family members of those members. Um, we're, we're very interested in um, identifying some additional members for the board of directors. There's an online question that asked, what is the process to join? So we have a nominating committee of our board of directors who would schedule an opportunity for multiple board members to meet um, candidates. They submit an application, a resume essentially, um, to that uh, nominating committee chair. Uh, then the board members meet with them, uh, discuss kind of what they're looking for in participation on the board of directors. We um, let them know what, what participation looks like on our board, what we would expect from a board member. Uh, and then it's taken to the board for nomination. And then another 30 days later, a vote happens. Um, and then typically on July 1st, they would start their, their time. I'm gonna throw out another request because um, something new to our contract is it's called a community advisory committee. And so that committee um, is mandated by healthcare policy and financing, where this group of individuals <clears throat> reviews, they will review Thierry's complaint log at minimum on a quarterly basis. That group or committee has to make recommendations as an advisory group to the resource exchange and report it to the board of directors. Here's some things we've saw. These are the recommendations we're making. Um, and so we are currently still trying to recruit members. I know right now, I think I've recruited Stephanie. I have recruited, recruited Jan and Dave, um, but we need more, we would like more um, 
uh, members in the Pueblo County area as well. Um, and I think we've recruited Jenna Wolf as well. She's uh, a provider, but we would like as many as possible because um, your feedback and your guidance is, is needed. There's a request online that asked if you could please send out an email with the information regarding the board of directors process to join. Can you uh, just send it out to the provider group? Is that, you think that's, what, think they're think that's what they're asking? Okay, absolutely. Yeah, he said yes, thank you. So we're going to hand out the surveys now. Um, one of the sheets is just uh, a sheet with information about the survey and a QR code if you want to access the survey online. And the other is printed copies. I don't know that we have enough printed copies of the survey for everyone, but um, hopefully those of you that prefer handwriting it can get one of those. Oh, never mind. They just said that's exactly what I was going to ask because I thought one of our staff was going to do that. So real quickly, while you all are receiving those surveys, and um, um, we really hope you take time. If you handwrite your survey today, you can leave it up on the table, and Anthony will take those back, um, or you can do them online. We plan to hold monthly town halls, as was mentioned, and so you will get additional information on what those will be and when those will be scheduled. Um, we want to continue this conversation well past March 1st. So this isn't just about the transition on March 1st, but it's really about evolving this system into the most productive system we can provide for people. So we really appreciate your time today. I know how busy you all are. So thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I don't know. 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 I don